The knowledge marketplace is a place that any can, anybody can browse to find the right person to meet, the right topic to explore. It's interesting to envision a, a society where we all as humans learn differently and we learn more naturally. The way that adults learn, like I'm an entrepreneur, I didn't go to entrepreneurship school. I just like did it and failed and succeeded and learned and then had brain dates and had like beers and coffee with people that are more intelligent than me and that's how I've been learning because I'm thriving for something that I'm very passionate about and I want to become the person that can actually tackle those challenges. That's how I learn. But that's not how kids learn. Kids learn what we tell them that they should be interested in learning. And I think that's the gap that we have to bridge, is how can we create educational contexts that are meaningful, whether you're six or you know, 50 years old. Facebook and Twitter were just starting being a mass um, communication you know, opportunity for, for, for communities and humans. And I saw that a lot of people were using social media to launch cry for help when they needed to learn something fast, you know. So um, I need to finish a business plan by tomorrow for a contest and I'm stuck on the marketing plan. Can somebody help me tonight? I'll pay the beer, you know, or like just something like that where I need to pick somebody's brain to propel myself. And I was seeing that myself, I learned the things that I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis by conversations that I've had with friends of friends and, and people that just guide me when I'm stuck or when I need to kickstart something new or new learning. And I was like, huh, like people are using social media for that, but it's not very efficient because it's an archive. It's not, it's not built so people actually can create their offers of knowledge and their request of knowledge. So that's where the idea of E180 came from. Basically, a user comes and creates their profile, and in the profile what you have is very simple, it's offers of knowledge. So depending on which um, event you will be using the platform, the offers that you will want to share will probably be different depending on the topic that the event is, is all about, because right now we focus on, on events. So you create your offers for knowledge, it can be as many as, as you want, which creates a knowledge marketplace. Once you find the right topic, you just contact the person, you book a brain date uh, in, your, in your agenda. And when we work with events, we have a brain dating lounge. So we have matchmakers, we welcome people, we, uh, as I was mentioning, we help them to define their own knowledge. And when they come for their brain date, we just check them in, we connect them with their brain date counterpart, and there they go and they sit down and they have their brain date and share knowledge about a topic that was identified already uh, throughout the booking process. Many people are like, I don't have anything to offer. I don't know anything that could be of use to anybody else. So our first work is to help people to gain a consciousness of their own, the own value of their own knowledge, basically. Um, so when you work with, with C2 Montreal, for instance, the topic is creativity. Don't tell me that there's 6,000 people that are interested in talking about creativity. You're not helping me, I know that, because we all gathered around that topic. So we have to help people to define their knowledge in a more um, precise way. So, okay, I can help with a marketing, social marketing strategy uh, to fight HIV in Africa. That's the type of depth that we get in the offers of knowledge that people create in their profile. So when you sit with somebody, you know exactly what you'll be talking about, so the conversation is in in incredibly useful and, and relevant. And we've seen things like um, this kind of power uh, dynamic between the teacher and the learner is something we're very weary of reproducing. And we always say that there's no experts. It's all about sharing what you know. And a good example of that as in C2 Montreal is two years ago, the most popular offer was an offer of a young woman, she was 22, she was a student, and her offer of knowledge was, I can share my millennial point of view on your product. So it was all about just for her to share her point of view as a young woman on any product that she would like to launch with a certain market in mind. Um, so it's, it's just reframing what it means to know and, and what it means to be sharing knowledge and who, who, possess, uh, who possess knowledge. I have another example where we work with Salesforce, so we work with uh, Dreamforce, which is a conference with 150,000 people in, in uh, San Francisco. And it's a tech conference, you know, it's usually a very tech talk. And uh, a woman shared an offer 
that was all about how to start um, a mindfulness meditation practice to overcome stress because working in technology, as you know, is a very demanding job. And she met somebody and it was a life-changing conversation for both of them. Um, and I think the element of surprise of finding a like-minded like sister at a conference, tech conference with 150,000 people was transformative because it just reconnected you in a moment where you didn't expect it with our common humanity. And these are the stories that we hear constantly when people just sit down together with the, um, the will of just give without agenda, just for the sake of contributing to another person's life is transformative because it's just such a generous and beautiful gesture. We started working with uh, conferences in 2013. So our first partner was uh, a conference called C2 Montreal. So it's a conference that was created with the Cirque du Soleil and Fast Company. Uh, about 6,000 people come together to talk about business and creativity and more and more social innovation as well. And our role there, again, is to help people not just to learn from the expert on stage, but learn from one another. Because sometimes the person sitting next to you, especially in these conferences where the level of participants is, is so high, the person sitting next to you is oftentimes as interesting, if not more interesting, than the person on stage, but you don't know who this person is. So our work is to unveil the knowledge available in a room so that the right conversation can take place, so people can learn from each other.